Facts. Facts of life. Facts of life. Right? I'm going to tell you a fact in a moment. I've got to take these glasses off, even though I'm not looking at them. Looking through them is what I mean in my desperate attempt to communicate at this juncture of fuckery. But if I do that, then it's a long story. But I think glasses very quickly make your eyesight worse. And that's why when you start wearing glasses when you're young, by the time you're old, they're really goggly eye things, okay? But I've never really needed glasses. They said I did it at opticians to be precisely precise. But I can still read very small code on a screen without the use of glasses at the age of 49. And the one day I've spent for 24 hours wearing glasses, they weren't even properly calibrated, I was googly eyed for a good few days until I readjusted to my normal state, which is very fucking good vision. I apologise for the use of the F word. It just fell out of my gob like a colloquialism of vulgarity. And I do sincerely apologise for that grim, grim lingo when you should expect better from a man of my calibre. That's all I'm saying at this juncture. Now we're going to talk about something quite exciting today. It's called... Hope, for want of a word. But my hope really lies... Oh, fuck. Hold on. My hope really lies in the knowledge that I'm about to give to you. You see, I fully believe, with all knowledge available to me in my understanding of history, religion, culture, art, science, etymology, biology, physics... No, I don't know much about chemistry. But the world has never been as intelligent as it is right now. Take that information and do with it what you will in your own mind. But it is absolutely true. If you think about it, right, I don't even know what I'm going to draw on these walls to demonstrate today. Let's just make sure this shit is working, man. <sighs> okay, so I've got 17 minutes to go and make this delivery, this symposium, this lecture, this oratory, this speech of rhetoric to the masses by which to hopefully make you see the benevolence of the world we live in. Let's take one thing. C. What does that mean to you? Well, it's the third letter of the alphabet, obviously, but in maths, C is the speed of light. Yes, we have calibrated the speed of light to within precision increments. You see, in the old days, which weren't that long ago, it's still very recently compared to the grand expanse of poverty, time, suffering, and god awful reality humanity's had to wage through. But eventually, some clever bods, not everyone, not everyone is a clever bod in this world. You've got to begin to understand just how stupid most people are. And even today, most people are more intelligent than they were a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, ten thousand years ago, three hundred thousand years ago. I mean, you, there was not a John Menzies for miles back in the antediluvian times, for instance. I mean, for God's sakes, we have replicated our intellect in so many modes of unique vision and fancy. I think God wouldn't be pissed off with all of us. I think God is keeping the peace because we are showing merit as a globalised system of humanoid intellectualism. Because we really are cracking the knuckle on some great groundbreaking breakthroughs in understanding the very universe we are living. We know now the speed of light, which in kilometres an hour is just under 300 million metres per second. And it should be 300 million metres per second, but the French scientists originally designing the system didn't get it quite right. But to calibrate everything again, recalibrate the world, if we had to change weights and measures once more for absolute precision reasons under an even more intelligent futuristic vision of Eternia, then it should be 300 million metres per second, and we readjust metres according to the millimetre increment differentials to fit in with that calibration, because then everything we measure in space, time and history is done to the calibrated millimetre of the speed of light. 
But it's still starting to say you can't really travel faster than... Obviously you can travel the theoretically faster than the speed of light. And there was such a thing called tachyons. But they're, they're just theoretical nonsense apparently. I wouldn't know either way. In fact, the, one of the worst experiences I ever had in my life was on Dark Acid when I felt like I touched light speed consciousness. And it was so bad. It was frightening, man. I just, I just, ah, oh, maybe we do think, maybe we think so fast that that's how we just blend with day to day normality. It's going faster than the speed of light, which perhapsly, perhapsly, perhaps is out of this realm of ability and, uh, you know, just comprehension for one of a word. Because, you know, once you touch those incredulous parsec breaking filter systems in neurological transitioning and altered states of chemically induced fuckery, then you are out of the park, in the conscious realm, for a good ten hours under the influence of whatever science voodoo they put into that horrible shit. And there is no easy coming back to relative normality once you've uh, gone beyond the event horizon of your own psyche, really, to put it in basic terms. So, there, look, and this could be the beginning of an atom, couldn't it? We know about atoms now. We know about atoms and protons and neutrons and electrons. And I can't even, I don't know how they're mangled together. It gets so complicated and it's not my field of research, potentially. Although I know a photon is a wave and a particle at the same time. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I read about it. But apparently a light particle is very unique. A photon which is a light particle, is a particle and a wave, they say. And we work this out thanks to the double slit experiment, which is really interesting. And I do kind of get what they're alluding to in the understanding of the overlapping of the fields between differentials in the behaviour you would think of normal light exhibiting logicism. But it doesn't always work that way in reality. Water. H2O, one of the weirdest sub substances known to man, according to many. So anyway, we have this bracket field dialogue. And we're rippling into the main chamber of nonsense now. Because I have no uh, idea where to go to, to illustrate and defend my argument that we are now more intelligent as a global species than we've ever been before. It, it is right. Look at the internet. Look at all the data everywhere. Look at the inventions. Look at the incredible intellect we are forging for ourselves as a human reality under God. It's astonishing that the, 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 the knowledge bag has been opened and that unicorns have flown. That's what I really feel and believe. And this, to look at this, this isn't any demonstration of high intellect at all. It's pure utter bollocks. But the point is, whatever it is, it looks like a belt buckle now, doesn't it? it looks like quite a good belt buckle, right, for sort of, sort of light chamber operatives in a cosmic neo sky of sci fi futurism. But the point is, we are more intelligent. I'm talking to a camera and I'm going to put it on the net to display to you all this goldigook, okay? And the point and the freedom and the liberty that I have to do that in this beautiful system of peace-loving, intelligent human beings. Not all very intelligent. Some of them are absolute divs. I will not lie. Some out there are so fucking thick it's unreal. Right? And I've met quite a few of them. But they're not what I'm talking about. We are talking people in NASA. People in Adobe. People in Google and iPhone technology and rocket science and nuclear science, right? To far betterment of understanding of the universe and science and world peace in a harmony of great intellect, which is what all this shit is about. It makes perfect sense. And yet the scallywags, unbelievers, deniers, haters, liars, abusers, madmen and psychos all have a go at the system. When the system is your baby, baby. Hold on, I've got a phone call. This rarely happens. Hello? 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 Hi, uh, good afternoon. Just giving you a call from your mobile.com in regards to the e, e account. Am I speaking with the account or that? Uh, why are you calling me? Uh, the reason for the call today is 
there, mate. It's just that the number's been linked to a business on the system, so I put you down as being a sole trader or limited company. That's still correct. Well, I'm neither officially under company's house because I, I, I can't handle um, uh, accounts. Uh, right, okay. Um, I'm not sure what that's come through on the system, mate. I'll get that update right for you then. But, you know, um, if I were uh, a company, what company do you have me registered as? Uh, I've got it down as the Enchanted Land of Nick Clark. Mm, that's where I live. <laughs> right, okay. Um, right, okay, a bit of a strange one then. You, you're not doing any sort of self employed work at all then, mate? I, I'd love to if I could get any work, but I can't because no one believes in me. I'm an artist, though. I am an artist, and I work very hard on a vision for a better world. Right, okay, so it's all about painting and that you do, is it, mate? No, it's more than painting. It's, it, I, I like to make videos and music and write books, and I'm an artist. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Bit of everything, really, then. I'm a jack of all trades, but master of some. <laughs> right, okay, fair enough. I like to think of that as myself, like, but... Um, I mean, if you are you not doing any sort, are you not getting paid for any of that, or maybe? No, I wish, buddy. Uh, right, okay. Um, not at the moment, anyway. I was gonna say, in that case, then what I'll do is I'll keep you in the system. I'll put a bit of faith into you, and um, hopefully, when next time we give you a call, you'll be getting paid for that work, and then we'll be able to have a look at what we can do for you in terms of looking at reducing your bill or getting your upgrade. Well, that sounds lovely. God bless your angel from the unknown ether. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for your time. Anyway, mate, I'll give you a call in there. A few months or so. All right. Bye bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. See, the world is so intelligent now. But don't think I'm fooled. I have no idea who that was. I don't even think he really phoned people up to do these sorts of things. Who am I to say, though? But whatever it is, he was either a goodie or a baddie. And if he was a goodie, he had a kind tongue and a nice manner and a decent idea to help society if what he said was legitimate. If he was a baddie, he should be taken out and shot on the morrow. And that's all I have to say about living in an intelligent world. It is about being true to others and you and God. God hates liars. They're all damned to hell. Do you understand this? They're all going to burn. But truth and believers and lovers, God can't get enough of them. And he saves a countless number in the apocalypse from damnation who put their faith in the Lord above. The world has never been so intelligent. And I can prove it. See, I did put it off after all, thanks to that random caller, NC, my initials. I am part of the highly intelligent program to make the world a better place. And yes, it's working. Word for Windows. Just feel the fluidity of that awesome software and all the other software that you use happily. This is made by intelligent, inspired, alien and touched human beings. And if you don't love it, and if you don't know how to work it, that's not our fault. But don't blame us for not being Luddites, because we're not. We fucking love Oh, I've done it again. Slurred. We've done it again. Anyway, we're not going back to Ludditism. Technology is genius. It's not satanic. Satanic is a foreign, dystopian, futuristic situation in which one guy has prescient control over all humanity apart from Christians who he slaughters. That's not technology. He might employ a form of technology to do his evil bidding, but that's not what technology basically is. Technology is smart. Evil is not. It's quite simple, the distinction. Anyway, I've said enough. Good night, and God bless. You just don't know your starry chips. No. I'm not going to waste this. You think I'd lose this opportunity? I make mean, shit. I'm a diagnostic channel of the interrelay system of high intelligence. There's nothing I can do on this mirror to replicate my knowledge, but perhaps write words in English. I'm lost. I can't do this. I can't lose this vector channel. I just have to replete knowledge. Just secondary awareness. The facets of the program are complete. Knowledge is tantamount to reality. And here we are bonded in the grand echoes of a thousand hurrahs. Longing for the peace of indifference or illumination, should that fester your worst self well. But come. Yes, yes. 
I see the glory of the apex, the tantamount vision of the creation, its burgeoning, its knowledge and its desire, and we in its crumpled realm sit happy jobby of the main knowledge access regions. But hither ye not, and bugger ye never. See within the, the, the proton ship of a variable field circuit, we're using the pillar in a reflective curve vector to add a little uh, conceptual art to the piece of the archaeology within the temporal mainframe of the Star Temple. And here we are, alluding to our happy chips. I'm gonna have a look at that on the vector screen. And there it is, I was pretty close, I was pretty close. So what we're going to do now, I see, I see a little tricker for me. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, for the trick of the entire movie. You see what I saw was very important to me in this close-up of this visual I've made, where this aspect of the diagram on the mirror becomes part of the pillar, for want of a word, aspect of the door frame. But I noticed here, this is target vector 1 on the visuals. It follows the edge in the reflection very well. So what I want to do is follow it down to about here, I think I looked. It's just beyond this off curve. And down to about here. And I'll get the edge. So what I'm going to do is give it a wiggly line. And now I'm going to look and see how close that was to the abstract field. Oh yes, scored it in one like a mofo. That was because I was using visual That's waypoints. That's oh, I gotta go now. Let's show it. Now this is more exciting than the time I set fire to someone's underpants. Now what we're going to do over here? Now this is impossible to do. I can't see the visual. You can see the painting in the reflection, but I, from my perspective, I can't see that painting of the butterfly in the mirror from this angle. But what I'm going to do, right, so it's two vector curves off the main increment. Right, so let's just see where it is about there, or there on my studies. Alright, so, alright, bottom one much further down. Alright, 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 alright. So it's just at the base of the curve, is it there, vector one shield? It's about there, and then we extrapolate across. So about here. So I'm going to try. I'm going to go for it. No, I think I hit the mustard there, and then we can go bouncy, 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 bouncy. No, it's off. But what it looks like is an interesting thing. Oh my God! Hold on. Is that Andy? Yeah. Hold on. Alright, stop. 